what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so in keeping with the kenya moran's soap opera we have another article to react to this is this article is done by team kenya.co.ke it's titled liz mills highlights what is the kenya moran so the kenya morans are set to participate in the fiba world cup and uh 25th and 27th of february this month this year so this article reads on Sunday, January 9th, 2022, Kenya Basketball Federation Secretary General Ambrose Kisoi announced Liz Mills has not signed any contract with the Morans. The KBF Secretary General noted that Liz was just appointed to assist the team through the Afro Basket journey alone. So, clear disrespect. They're saying that she was just appointed to assist the team. And uh, we all knew that she was the head coach, not just an appointed person just to, you know, assist the team so yeah i mean the australian coach not even the kid the former coach they're saying the australian coach who has been a revelation since joining the kenyan technical bench this february in february last year and will be replaced by legendary cliff war so yeah they they did that they you know uh, they just returned uh their former coach that you know um <laughs> it was they didn't do much as we speak so yeah, KBF brought in Liz Mills to only assist the team and not tie down to a contract. She requested us to let her assist the Morans as we sorted out our issues after war found a job in Rwanda. Today, war is back and now she has to leave, so Kisoi stated. She earned her place in continental basketball history as the first woman to steer a men's team to the championships. Okay, that's that's actually pretty good. But, you know... um. Moving forward, the articles article Mills, who has been coaching men's basketball in Africa for the last ten years, was keen to note that Kenya, for Kenya to compete in the top-ranked teams, they have to change their style and culture. So, as you have been seeing, like the way Kenyan Kenyans play this run and gun, this uh, kind of kind of basketball, isn't working, especially when you put that team, put our national team to the international stage. This thing has shot us in the foot uh, multiple times. So in every article and press conference, I have always proudly acknowledged and spoken highly of Kenya, the players and the federation, regardless of any issues circulating behind the scenes. So, you know, she kept her in with professionalism. So uh, moving forward, to compete with the top-ranked FIBA teams in Africa, the style and culture of Kenyan basketball needs to evolve. This is something I just have been addressing in, you know, in my channel since uh, last year february and uh, not only in february that's february is the time i came to youtube officially uh, in the commentary space but uh, moving even in the first window in november this is something i addressed in my twitter i used to tweet at these guys and tell them yo this is this that style isn't isn't gonna win any game and we're gonna lose so moving forward she was quoted as saying run and gun amateur tactics and simplistic plays will hinder the team's performance moving into an elite national competition such as the Afro Basket, which was true because they only managed to win three games out of ten games. So the record is three and seven. So this run and gun thing wasn't going to cut it. Growth and development are challenging and uncomfortable but can be incredibly rewarding if you're open to the process, Mill stated. You see, these people are not open to the process because when we keep mentioning that these guys are old, and indeed they are old, they can't change, they're complacent. It's hard to to bring in new ideas to this team because this team, the way it's constructed, is an old team. You know, uh, uh, guys, the mean age right there is 31, and you're competing with guys in Senegal who are like, the oldest is like 22, and they are whooping you left, right, and center. Even you can see the Sudanese team, they're a young team. And they're still whooping, they still whooped us in the Afro basket. So this is one thing that rings very true. The Australian coach was keen to highlight that some Moran players were not open to this mindset, and it was reflected in their time on the court at the Afro basket. True. I mean, if you look at some of the, the, if you look at the stat sheet, you can actually be appalled by the performance these guys put up. It was actually pretty sad to see. A person just, you know, uh, average zero points in a stretch of three games and playable even in the final minutes, the fourth quarter. So that's pretty true. 
Even the greatest players in the world strive to be better. A few of the Kenyan players simply did not believe they needed to get better. So, I mean, that's what you get when you have an old roster of old people that don't want to change. Old people are complacent, they're rigid, and they can't change. No matter how much you tell them, they simply can't change. So, it's just, you know, unable to move. The Kenya, the, the Kenya Basketball Federation was unable to move on, dead, move, move on or get over this dead wood. So, yeah. Competition in a team should be healthy, but some players went so far as to speak to members of the coaching staff and ask their teammates to be dropped because they were worried about playing their game. So she added, I mean, this is just internal politics that, you know, old people who have regressed uh, keep using as a tactic to scare away the new talent that's coming in. So, And that's the reason why the Kenyan team is very old and the same players keep being ringed along because of such politics and nonsense like this so which is very embarrassing especially for a national team that represents a country in the international basketball community so she she also highlighted that some players had numerous disciplinary infractions during training camp and at the Afro basket so you know all people you can't tell them anything so this included arriving late or missing training and film sessions as well as being late to depart for games Players were also caught drinking and leaving training camp to attend parties. So you can see the sheer indiscipline, the sheer disrespect of the position you play, and the sheer disrespect that these national, this national team shows towards you know training, even the, the new strategies that Coach Liz Mills tried to put it forward. You see, then they're surprised that they are losing games. They're surprised that they are falling too much. They're surprised that they're getting criticized left, right, and center as people are coming forward and calling them out on their bullshit. Then you see some people, you tell them the truth, the general sex, this is a, these, these players are just delusional at this point. Then they wonder why they are losing and they wonder why they are trash. If you can see in arriving late or missing trainings and film sessions and you know departing late for games, that's a recipe for disaster. That's a recipe for failure. Then if they do these small infractions, this, not even, they're not even small infractions, they're actually big infractions. If they keep doing this, then they expect winning. Then they must be the most deluded person in this whole world. I mean, you cannot do these things. You cannot participate in these kinds of behaviors. I mean, missing training and film sessions, you know, getting late, you know, for, for practice and training sessions, you know, caught drinking and leaving training camp to attend parties. Then you expect to win. Get the, get the hell out of here. Liz Mills revealed that also the also that the players also misused the trust of the coaching staff, where whereby when they were awarded days off or given leave to finish work or handle family matters, the players would fail to report to team activities on time or not even reporting. So these infractions, the lack of discipline that they have, uh, they have shown then the uh, surprise that they win is actually pretty amazing. It's actually laughable at this point because this is this is very telling. Then they shouldn't be surprised if, you know, they, they, they suck. And uh, the only way that they can get respect from these other African teams is when they win games and show some level of competence. These guys try to put on a facade that they are the best, they are the best team in Africa. They try to gas themselves up. But initially, but when you look at the stats and look at the behaviors, they're straight up trash. I mean, then they wonder why they're not winning games when they participate in these kinds of behavior. So, I mean, I, I even, I even, even if I was the coach, I wouldn't accept. We would just walk out because this is this is utter rubbish and nonsense. You you can't expect this from a national team that's representing a country, a whole country. The guys don't even understand the magnitude of that. Before Mills became the head coach of the Morans, Kenya had one of the worst defensive ratings in the Afrobasket qualifiers. And this worst defensive rating was there when Cliff War was in charge of the team. Then these guys, these KBF guys are so crazy, they let go of Liz Mills and they bring back the, say, the coach that had the worst defensive ratings, expecting to have different results. I mean... Mjinga ni nani? At the end, of, at the end, at the end, <laughs> at the end of the Afro basket, the team finished with the fifth best defense and also improved its offense efficiency, offensive efficiency. Uh, as much as they improved their offensive efficiency, they only won out of four games in the Afro basket. They only won one, and it was against a losing team. So, 
but fifth in defense, fifth best defense, eh, the fifth best defense. But you know, you're 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 giving out at least um, you're averaging 25 points per game. I mean, you can't, when it came to like guys outscoring you, so I mean, it's sad. I mean, <laughs> during her tenure. Kenya not only played at the Afro Basket for the first time in nearly three decades, but also advanced from the group stages after a win over Mali. So the Mali win, they tried to overhype it, but we all know the truth. I mean, Mali was a team that was coming off uh, losing two straight games. So, I mean, they were in the same boat. So it was just like the, the winning loser or the best loser like won. So, yeah, and also they lost. the Kenya lost against South Sudan, who they were, you know... Uh, <laughs> They actually thought that they would defeat South Sudan, the way South Sudan is being run. Actually, the, the South Sudan Federation is actually way better than the Kenya Basketball Federation. And even that's even not an understatement. That's not even an understatement. It's the truth. So, yeah. Regarding my comments about the nature of the team moving forward, the Federation has spoken with the coaching staff numerous times about its desire to rebuild around young players, young group, a yeah, younger group of players, especially those with international experience. Now, this is something that I actually agree with. They should disband this Kenyan Rams team after, you know, the FIBA World Cup, after they lose three straight games in the FIBA World Cup, and uh, they, they lose. They should just disband this team and, you know, redraft from young players. Not only, they, they shouldn't even zero around international experience. They don't need that. They actually need local players who they can teach, who they can study film with, who they can grow together so that they can build a championship contender the way South Sudan did, or Uganda to some extent. Throughout my time with the team, I consistently had meetings with individual players to listen to feedback, and it's disappointing that players don't want to discuss their feedback with me after AfroBasket. So this is actually uh, this is actually a characteristic, characteristic that reigns true with you know play, training old people. They just don't want to open up because. Uh, and, you know, reality is dawning on them with their failures. So the, it's just a bitter pill for them to swallow that uh, they're actually better players than them. And, you know, this federation, when they play internally, gasses them up. They, they win games. They look good playing in Kenya. But, you know, when they go international, they get brutalized, op- almost embarrassed. They, they they don't get the calls that, you know, these Kenyan referees give them. So, I mean, that's the, it's the truth. It's the truth. It's unfortunate, she was clear again and saying, it's unfortunate that some players feel the need to point fingers and make excuses rather than hold themselves accountable for their lack of court time and poor performance. Yes, this is what I've been saying. There's no one who's doing what I'm doing, holding these people to account, making sure that these people understand that what they do in the court is not about, you know, even individual, it's about the jersey that they're wearing. They're using it and embarrassing our country. Then people like my independent reporters and journalists like myself, basketball pundits, when they come out and call them out on their bullshit, they, they get so mentally fragile and they act as if we, we, we are getting, on, getting at them for nothing, yet the facts disprove every claim that they are saying. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's very laughable and amazing to see, uh, you know, grown, peop- grown men, you know, uh, express like they're so sensitive when they get criticized and they don't want to be held to account, it's not a fact of even them personally. It's the fact that you're wearing a Kenyan jersey and embarrassing Kenya, and you don't want even to be accountable. So it, it, it's, <laughs> it's actually pretty, you know, interesting. <laughs> I mean, I've made so many videos addressing this, and it, it seems that they, they're just not getting it. We're tired. She was all, Liz Mills was quoted as saying, being able to self-reflect and analyze is what separates average players from great players. It is also disappointing that these players felt the need to air their grievances on newspapers rather than going through the appropriate basketball channels. You can see this is a, some weak-minded strategy that you know these players have. They, they understand that they wanted to get rid of uh, a, a good coach and just put a yes man in Cliff Ward inside there, who they can you know manipulate. They can you know do things. The 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 way that they didn't want to change so not anyone not everybody is open to change so and these Kenyan Marans have proven time and time again that they don't want to change they want to maintain the same mediocrity and keep using that mediocrity to fuel their 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 basketball careers here in Kenya 
and also abroad. And uh, you can see even abroad, <laughs> they're, they're, they're failing. These guys are failing, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad to see. Uh, you're, you're supposed to handle basketball matters with the right channels, but these guys took the most unprofessional and immature way of unhandling this, this situation. And, you know, it came at the cost of their own reputation and trust as well as the whole Kenya Basketball Federation's reputation. So it's the truth. I was not made aware by the captain or this group of players of any issues they had, nor did the Federation ever speak to me regarding them. So this was an inside job, apparently. I will not be making any further public statements regarding issues within the team and Federation. So Mills highlighted this, and actually she kept a level of professionalism if, if because she, if she was to open a can of worms of what was happening, I mean, the, the Kenyan basketball community will look at the federation differently and open the, to the real, and open the eyes to the realization that these guys are very, very unprofessional and it can, you know, show how incompetent they are if she opened her mouth and uttered the things that they have been discussing in the federation. So Louis Mills kept her end of the bargain of being confidential, whereas the Kenyan Morans spat in her face and you know uh, took the took the easy way out and, and tried to scapegoat her and say that she was the reason why they didn't you know succeed and which was not the truth all she did was she got hired to take a basketball team to the next level but apparently the Kenya Basketball Federation and the team Orans thought otherwise they thought that they wanted a yes man inside there and uh, they they didn't want to be accountable and change i don't think a kill for war can even take them to the next level Afrocan was designed to a tournament not even for the most elite teams at the time at that time so the afrobasket was where the real stage is and when you get a real coach who's going to teach you the real ways to win you didn't want that you just wanted to remain complacent that's what the kenyan Marans did the decorated basketball coach thank, thanked kenyan fans for their support as she coached the Marans. however she noted she will not return to the team. Well, that's a that's a bridge bunt. So after Afrobasket, I had no plans of returning to the team, although I did continue to speak with the Federation members and some players with the hope of leaving the team in a good position to start its preparation for FIBA for the not FIBA for World Cup also for the FIBA World Cup qualifiers moving forward. I wish the team all the best, she stated. And that's the end of the article. So I mean this is this is a situation where you can see a whole federation doesn't want to change. They just want to keep, you know, remaining incompetent. And um, as long as I'm here, I'll just keep, you know, putting my foot down their necks and making sure that they are accountable. And uh, this this has to end. And the only way it has to end is by, you know, getting younger players from these leagues, like the, the Street League Africa, they, 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 that's in, based in Omoja, there's Kawasukari, draft players from Kenya. Draft players who are Kenyan, put them there, give them opportunity. Actually, you can even find a situation where you can even make three rosters for the Kenya Morans, like over 25, under 25, under 17, under, under 15 or under 14, that can play basketball. And they can be able to, you know, do something aside from, you know, uh, getting all these, these known old people uh, I mean, if basketball hasn't worked out for you and you're past the age of 26, just forget about it. I mean, just forget it. Just put a just put up a roster that people are aged between age 20 and 25. You can find good players who can play all positions. You can find them. It's just that this federation doesn't want to do that because it's it's corrupt. I know many people don't want to mention it, but I will. It's a corrupt federation. They retain the same players. They don't want to change, and uh, they, they retain the same coach. They don't want to change, and uh, when they when they lose, they're surprised that they lose. Oh, <laughs> what kind of delusional people are these? This is just, it's just laughable at this point. And um, that's the article. And uh, Kenyans are now real coming to the realization that uh, this organization is a poorly run organization. And uh, as much as they try to sugarcoat it now people are coming to understand what's really going on so i'll be here to you know just keep you guys informed on what's really going on here and uh yeah that, that's why i'm here so yeah man yeah if you guys like the video like the video make sure you leave your feedback down in the comment section down below on what you think about this article what you think about the kenya morans 
What do you think their chances are of winning even a single game in the FIBA World Cup qualifiers? Yeah, just leave leave your feedback down in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on notification posts that you never miss any new videos I'm coming out with. And uh, that being said, I'm out. Peace.